Hey and welcome back. This is part three of the November 2020 paper, paper two that I'm going through. Question 14. Here are two squares A and B. The length of each side of square B is four centimeters greater than the length of each side of square A. The area of square B is 70 centimeters squared greater than the area of square A. Find the area of square B. You give your answer correct to three significant figures. You must show all your working. So I'm going to, I'm going to form an equation using algebra and then solve it okay so let's call this length x if that length let's just let's say a here and we've got b here if i call a's length x that means the area because it's a square is going to be x squared okay so x times x would give me x squared now it says the length of b is four centimeters greater so the length for b is going to become x plus four Okay, so I'm going to say that is x plus 4. So to say the area, I'm going to say x plus 4 squared. Again, that's a square. So x plus 4 here, this would become x plus 4 squared. However, there is another way to say the area for B because the area for B is 70 centimeters greater than the area for square A. The area for square A can be said as x squared and it's 70 centimeters greater, which is why I can say x squared plus 70. So there are two ways to say the area for square B. So I'm going to make both of these equation expressions equal to each other. I'm going to say x squared plus 70 is equal to x plus 4 squared. Okay, because that is for the area of square B and that is also for the area of square B. Make them equal to each other. Work out the value of x. Okay, so... Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand my brackets. So x squared plus 70 equals to x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 4. If I expand it, I've got x, plus, x squared plus 70 equals to x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. Simplify that a little bit further. x squared plus 70 equals to x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now I'm going to rearrange to work out the value of x. First, I will subtract x squared from both sides. That cancels, that cancels. They literally cancel from both sides. I'm left with 70 is equal to 8x plus 16. I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. Take away 16 here, take away 16 here. I'm left with 8x equals to 70 subtract 16 is going to give me 54. Now, using your calculator, this is a calculator paper, I'm going to divide it by 8 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 6.75. Okay, 6.75. Now, I need to work out, look back at what the question is asking you, it's asking me find the area of square B. So, I've worked out X, not the area of square B. So, each length for B is X plus 4, and I know X equals 6.75. So, I'm going to do 6.75, oh, sorry, 6.75 plus 4, which is going to give me 10.75. Now, I know the length of the square, I can do length times length, to give me the area 10.75 times 10.75 plug it into your calculator um, you're going to get a decimal but you need to round it to three significant figures and you're going to get 116 to 3 sf so your final answer for area of square b is 116 centimeters squared to three significant figures oh sorry okay Make sure all of your working is here. Remember, this question is four marks, so even a few of the working out would get you a couple of marks here and there. So do remember, always do some working out, guys. Okay, let's zoom out for this question. Describe fully the single transformation that maps A onto B. Let me just grab my ruler. Okay, the length for this is two, and the length for this is three. Okay, oh, sorry, three. 3 divided by 2, that's 1.5. So I know the scale factor is going to be 1.5 for the enlargement, okay? Now, it's not being rotated, okay? It's not being reflected, it's not the same size. It's not being rotated, it's not the same size. It's not being translated, it's not the same size. So it's going to be enlargement. I'm going to jot down, this is enlargement. Um, now, scale factor. Scale factor. I know it's 1.5, but I have to be very careful. Is that positive or negative? Now, if the triangle is facing the same direction, it will be positive. But if it's facing the opposite direction, it's going to be negative. Always remember that. If it's facing the same direction, positive. Opposite direction, negative. Okay, so jot that down if you need to. So it's going to be negative 1.5, my scale factor. 
okay last but not least center of enlargement to do this i'm going to join the matching ones so the matching vertices these two are going to join um these two are going to join and these two are all going to join as well okay now whatever point they all pass through is going to be the center of enlargement they all seem to pass through this point here so the center is going to be one one okay and that's your two marks there let's move on that was done okay here are the first five terms of a quadratic sequence find the expression in terms of n for this sequence okay so this is a quadratic nth term question all right the way i'm going to do this is i've got 10 21 38 61 90. first i'm going to work out the differences between these numbers okay the differences between 10 and 21 is 11 differences 17 plus 23 plus 29 okay now i'm going to work out the second difference so this next second difference is plus six plus six plus six now i'm going to half my second difference a half of six is three so i'm going to work out the values for three n squared so what is n this is the first term this is the second term this is the third term and this is the fourth term fifth term okay i'm only going to work out three now n means term okay so for the first time i'm going to replace n with one replace it with two replace it with three so three times one squared three three times two squared twelve three times three squared twenty seven okay so this is the values for three n squared i'm going to do the top row this row here take away this row so 10 take away three is seven 21 i'll just cancel that out 21 take away 12 is 9 38 take away 27 is 11 now i'm going to work out the normal nth term for these this sequence here i could work out all of them not really necessary plus 2 plus 2 so i'm going to work out the values for 2n 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 2 is 4 2 times 3 is 6 oh i'm going to do the top row take away the bottom row 7 take away 2 is plus 5 9 take away 4 is plus 5 and 11 take away 6 is plus 5 so my nth term is 3n squared plus 2n plus 5. 3n squared plus 2n plus 5. Okay. Write down the coordinates of the turning point of the graph of y is equal to x plus 12 minus 7. Now, usually you have to complete the square in order to do this. However, they've already completed the square for you. So one mark question the number on the inside becomes the, the opposite so if it's negative on the inside it becomes positive if it's positive on the inside it becomes negative so it's going to be minus 12 and the one on the outside stays the same so i'm just going to say opposite stay same okay so that one's going to stay negative 7. so the turning point for this graph is minus 12 minus 7. okay the diagram represents a solid cone. The cone has a base diameter of 20 centimetres and a slant height of 25. A circle is drawn around the surface of the cone at a slant height of 10 centimetres above the base. The curved surface of the cone above the circle is, a paint, is painted grey. So these two cones are similar shapes because this cone is inside that cone. They're very proportionate to each other. Work out the area of the curved surface of the cone that's not painted grey. So simply I would do the big cone, take away the grey cone to work out the leftover bit. Um, give your answer as a multiple pi, you must show all your working, okay? So, I'm going to kind of show you how to do this without a calculator, even though you're allowed one. We've got, I'm just going to sketch out the big cone and the little cone. So, we've got the big cone and we've got the little cone, sorry. Okay, um, the slant height for the big cone is 25. The slant height for the little cone, let's just have a look. If that's 25 and that's 10, that's going to be 15, okay? So, that's going to be 15, now the diameter for this is 20 centimeters so that means the radius equals 10. i don't know the radius for this that is what i want to work out now remember everything in the small one is proportionate to everything in the large one so if i did small cone radius divided by large cone radius that would equal to small cone length over large cone length okay so just bear with me with the letters so everything is proportionate, okay? So let's substitute in. I want to work out the small cone radius. I'll call it x. The large cone radius is 10. The small cone length is 15. And the large cone length is 25, okay? Because everything is proportionate. 
Now, I need to work out the value of x, so I'm going to times it by 10 on both sides. So x equals to 15 over 25 multiplied by 10. 15 times 10 is 150, so x equals 150 over 25. Sorry, 150 over 25. 150 divided by 25 is 6, therefore x equals 6. The radius for the small cone is 6. Okay? Now, moving on. The curved surface area formula is given, so I'm going to say curved surface area okay first i'm going to work it out of the big cone okay the the large cone all of it so pi times radius times length so pi times the radius of the big cone is 10 and the length of the big cone is 25 so pi times 10 times 25 remember i need it in terms of pi so i'll just do 10 times 25 which is 250 pi again didn't need a calculator now i'm going to do the small cone so again pi times radius times length and i've worked out that the radius for the small cone is six so pi times six times and the length for the small cone is 15 six times 15 is 90 so i'm left with 90 pi okay now again i do the big cone take away the small cone in order for me to work out the leftover area so i'm going to do 250 pi take away 90 pi and i'm left with 160 pi so the area the final area of the leftover bits here if I took away the top code, it's going to be 160 pi centimeters squared. And I have to leave my answer in terms of pi. You will lose marks if you don't. Okay, so this is going to be your final answer. This is the end of part three. Thank you so much for watching. I will be posting part four shortly. Do subscribe and like and share. Thank you.